Do me a favor real quick and just Google the lyrics to the song Diggy Diggy Hole and look at the chorus. Yeah, that's pretty much Deep Rock Galactic's entire shtick, and yet somehow it's one of my favourite multiplayer games of all time. Deep Rock Galactic is a four-player co-op indie shooter developed by Ghost Ship Games and published by Coffee Stain Publishing. It was released on May 13th, 2020 for Windows and Xbox One, and January 4th, 2022 on PS4 and PS5. The premise is pretty much just the joke I had at the start. You're a dwarf and you mine for minerals in space, Jesus, Marie. while also fighting off hordes of space bugs, and I mean a lot of bugs. You also spend a lot of time building and repairing pipes. The game has several areas that missions can take place in. They rotate out every so often so that you can always access a new area. Some of them have different conditions like an infestation of a certain species of bug or even a weather condition like a sandstorm or a blizzard. Plus all the cave systems are procedurally generated, meaning that you'll never be mining in the same cave twice. You can play alone, with friends and random people online. You get to choose between four classes of dwarf. The engineer has a shotgun and grenade launcher. The engineer can deploy platforms to help teammates reach high spaces and a deployable sentry gun that automatically shoots enemies. The gunner has a minigun and revolver. They can deploy a bubble shield to give them room to revive people or just drive enemies away. The gunner can also pull a pathfinder and set up zip lines for people to use, but they are way too slow on the way up. The driller has a flamethrower and a pistol and can drill really well. Go figure. The automatic drills make tunneling really easy and can be used as melee weapons. The driller also carries C4 pouches if you're just too lazy to dig or just want to fuck someone up. The scout uses an assault rifle and shotgun. They provide support to the team in terms of lighting. It gets pretty dark when you're mining for minerals, so the flare gun is really helpful. The scout can also zip around with a grappling gun to quickly reach places that other classes can. Each class can complete assignments to get new weapons, which can stop playing the same class from getting stale. I don't know if you can tell which class I prefer. There's another member of the team that I haven't mentioned yet, Molly. <coughs> The mule robots are minecarts on legs that accompany you on missions and carry all the minerals that you mine. There's also another helper robot that shows up when you're playing solo missions. Bosco will mine things that you ping and fight enemies with you. Bosco is only available when you're playing alone. If you're hosting a public game and another person joins your team, Bosco will disappear, but Bosco will reappear if people leave and you're on the mission alone again. There are eight main mission types, with each mission having a primary and secondary objective. Only the primary objectives are needed to complete the mission, but you get a bonus for completing the secondary objective. From my experience, people online tend to try and complete both objectives, which gets really fun when you're looking for the last blue fossil on the walls of the cave that are also blue. That doesn't get old. The missions you'll be doing are mining expeditions, where you need to collect a certain amount of markite, egg hunts, where it's always Easter, you collect alien eggs from within nests and fight off the swarms that come after you for it, on-site refining, where you set up a liquid markite refinery and use pumps to collect it, salvage operations, where you need to find and repair lost mini mules, point extraction, which is pretty much the same as mining expeditions, except you collect big gems, escort duty missions involving defending the drill dozer, also known as Loretta, as it drills through caverns to extract the armor and heartstone. In elimination missions, you have to find big bug eggs, crack them open and kill whatever crawls out of them. And finally, industrial sabotage missions, where you hack into a rival company systems to steal information. During missions, you can sometimes stumble onto other things like random boss fights against big enemies. You can also find and repair supply crates to get a lot of valuable minerals and a special cosmetic like weapon skins or pickaxe parts. There's plenty of variety when it comes to missions, so you're not going to get stuck working through the same mission structure over and over again. To get access to certain parts of the game like new guns, new mission types and the mineral trade station, you have to complete assignments which are comprised of several missions that you need to complete. I like that unlocking a new weapon is called getting your license for new equipment. The Deep Rock Galactic equivalent of being a certified forklift driver is being allowed to freeze enemies and allies in place. When you reach a certain level you can promote your dwarf to the next class to get access to deep dives in the forge. Deep dives are collections of three missions which have additional conditions which make them more difficult like your health and shields carrying over between missions and a high chances of enemy mutation. The forge allows you to craft new cosmetics and weapon overclocks to make you better at killing things. The main hub of the game has a couple of things to do when you're not on main missions. There's a bar where you can buy beers that have different effects ranging from making you small, making you black out, and increasing the amount of gold you get on missions. You can try to get a high score by kicking barrels through a hoop. You can dance. You can kick barrels into the launch bay. 
Please just let the barrels be. As fun times go, there are better options available. You can customize your class and upgrade your equipment. You can purchase cosmetics and new beard styles and trade minerals to be used for upgrades. My favorite thing to do is to put all of the barrels into someone's room when they're away getting food or something. The number of cosmetic options you can use to customize your dwarves is pretty huge. You're able to get different beards, eyebrows, sideburns, headgear and armor. No two dwarves will look the same and it gives you a feeling of uniqueness. Also try and name 10 games where you're able to create Flint Lockwood's dad and Dr. Eggman. One of the greatest things about the game is the community. The official Discord server is really active and full of people, so it's never hard to find people to play with. They even have links to smaller Deep Rock Galactic communities, some of which are linked to specific countries, which makes it a lot easier to find people to play with in your time zone. The server is regularly updated with the details about upcoming patches, speedruns, discussions, and each platform has a separate channel for things specific to them. Unlike a lot of devs who either hate mods with a passion or make you pay for them, the official Discord has sections for people to discuss and showcase mods. The devs are pretty active in the server. There are sections for suggestions, bug reports and Q&As. The devs look for fan feedback and that's really nice to see, especially for a game of this quality. There's even a section in the game where you can see the number of people in the Discord server and the progress towards game-wide events. From being in the server for a while and playing the game, I think the main thing that the devs tried to achieve was building a community and encouraging people to make friends where they wouldn't have expected to. And I can say they've definitely achieved that. I don't know why, but Deep Rock Galactic contextualizing everything is a genuine job where you get bonuses for doing extra work, get promotions for completing assignments, and get yelled at by management somehow makes the game more fun for me. I think that's mainly just because I hate my job and I'd rather be mining shit in space. Overall, I think Deep Rock Galactic is a really well made and maintained game. It's perfect to just sit and do a mission or two to relax after work. I've had so many good times playing online with both friends and strangers, and the community's really friendly. I'd confidently say it's my favourite indie game of all time. I hope that the game continues to receive fresh updates and the community thrives. And with the release release of season 2, I can confidently say that that's happening. Also a nice little touch, you can slap the dice in the drop pod, game of the decade.